Caution, the following video may contain offensive content. Viewer discretion is advised, especially among children, family members, and future employers. Enjoy. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dalton here, and today I'm going to be talking about Rogue One, a Star Wars story. I saw it last night, and I have a lot to say. And there's going to be plenty of spoilers, so this is your warning. Also, I apologize, I'm getting over a cold, so that's why I sound really gravelly and just really bad all around. I'm not sure exactly how to phrase this, but I can't even believe that this movie exists. Watching Rogue One A Star Wars Story reminded me of reading a Star Wars comic book. It's like it had a lot of plot elements that tie into the original trilogy while standing apart in its own right. It, it just blew my mind. I can't believe that they made a movie about stealing the Death Star plans. So I guess the question is, did I like it? Did I like Rogue One A Star Wars Story? Yeah, I did like it. I can say that I did like it. Was it fantastic? Was it mind-blowing? Some parts, definitely I could say so. So where do I begin with this? I, I don't know where to start without rambling, so here it goes. I'm just going to talk about it. So I'm just going to come out and say, Tarkin. Holy sh**. So the scene where Krennic walks up to Governor Tarkin, you see the back of his head, you see the reflection on the window, and you know it's Tarkin, and you think, oh, well, of course he's not going to turn around. Peter Cushing's dead. How are they going to do it? And then he f***ing turns around, and you see his face. It was such a shocking moment for me that I don't remember a single thing that was said in that scene. Literally, my mouth was hanging open, and I did not hear a word that either of them said in that scene. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It seriously blew me away, and there were so many scenes with him. I thought it was going to be one of those situations, because I, I heard rumors that, oh, Tarkin's gonna be in it, yada, yada, yada. And it's one of those things that, oh, well, I don't wanna see that, because obviously they're just gonna get somebody that's a look-alike, and it's not gonna look good at all. It's just gonna completely clash with the rest of the movie. I thought Tarkin was great. I love seeing Tarkin. Uh, it, it seriously blew me away. So that leads me up to the other point, and like I said, I'm jumping all over the place here. Leia at the very end. Seeing Leia, that f***ing blew me away. Once again, I didn't think she would turn around at the end. You see her in her gown or whatever that she wears in A New Hope, and you know it's her. Uh, Bail Organa was in the movie, and he mentions her, and I thought that was just going to be it. I thought they were just going to briefly mention Leia, and that, that'd be the end of it. But at the end, you see her, you see her back to the camera, and once again, she turns around. I mean, that's obvious. They did that on purpose, for sure, you know. No one thought that they would see Peter Cushing in another Star Wars movie, considering he's been dead for decades. This is insane. I could not believe it. Okay, so the next thing I guess I'm going to talk about are the Vader scenes. Okay, so they did show in the trailers that Vader was going to be in it, and I honestly think they showed too much of Vader. I thought the reveal of him in the back to tank, whenever uh, Krennic was on his way, right before he meets up with Krennic and he chokes him out and stuff, I thought that was really awesome. That's something we hadn't seen before, but also at the same time it didn't reveal his face. You knew it was Vader, but it kept everything kind of in the shadows. I'm glad that they got James Earl Jones to do the voice again. I mean, obviously, you can't have Darth Vader without James Earl Jones. The video games have tried and failed. James Earl Jones is Darth Vader. You can't change that. And the fact that he was able to do the voice again, incredible. However, I have to say, there were certain parts that it didn't really sound like Vader, if that makes sense. In his older age, obviously, it's been 30-some years since he played Vader, um, so he's going, he's going to sound different. But also, I think the dialogue, some of the dialogue didn't really sound like something that would come out of Darth Vader's mouth. But I, I, I have to say, I was kind of apprehensive about the Vader scenes, but I ended up liking it. So now I'm going to be a little more critical and talk about some of the stuff that I didn't particularly care for in Rogue One. I knew that there wasn't going to be a title crawl like in the other movies. That's been something that's been circulating around the internet for a while now. But when the text comes up in the beginning of the movie and it says, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and then there was like this loud music cue and the movie just begins. And honestly, I don't think it really added anything to the film to remove it. I understand that they did something new, kind of having these flashbacks. That's not something that's really been done before other than, I guess, like Force Visions, like in uh, The Force Awakens. But at the same time, I don't think it was necessary to remove the title crawl completely. Um, I think a little bit of backstory 
was almost needed more so in this film than the rest because it wasn't an episodic film. A lot of people that maybe aren't as familiar with the Star Wars series needed maybe a little bit of background on what was happening other than just the flashback. And then finally, after the flashback of Jin's father being, uh, I guess, confronted by Krennic and her mother getting shot and Jin going down into hiding, we get Rogue One, it like slams up on screen. And that title reveal, I have to admit, was like the lamest thing I have seen in a long time. They should have just done traditional title crawl at the beginning of the film after a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Not this flashback, lame title reveal with the new score. Didn't like that at all. So that brings me to the next point, I guess. The music, there were a couple times where the music stood out to me and I was like, oh, that is definitely not John Williams. And then as the movie progressed and more stuff was happening, I noticed it less and less. But I have to say for the first hour or so of the film, it was sticking out like a sore thumb, I thought. There were definitely music cues that were inspired by John Williams score, but there was a lot of organic stuff made by this new composer that just seemed completely out of place. So as far as the tone of the film, I thought it was fairly decent. I mean, everybody knew that this was going to be kind of like a war espionage film rather than like a traditional space opera adventure. It was definitely darker than a lot of other Star Wars films, which is a good thing, I think. I'm glad that they finally put the war into Star Wars. Something I was afraid of was K2SO's personality. I knew that he was going to be the comic relief of the movie, but I didn't want him to be another 3PO or God forbid, another Jar Jar. But he was kind of reserved and they were subtle about his jokes, so I thought that was definitely a good thing. And he was almost sarcastic in a way, and I thought it was just enough to kind of offset the dark tone of the film, but not so overbearing that it distracted from it. So that brings me to Cassian, I suppose. I liked him a lot. I liked that he was kind of like a no-nonsense dude. I was surprised at how ruthless he was. Like in the beginning scene where he gets that information from the informant and then just straight up kills him because he's being surrounded by stormtroopers. I thought that was like really ruthless and not something I expected. I just expected him to be the typical goody two-shoes hero of the film. The fact that he was kind of ruthless and didn't take any shit was really surprising to me, but also kind of a breath of fresh air. I was also surprised at how the Rebel Alliance was just generally ruthless all around. They weren't as extreme as Saul's guerrilla fighters, but the fact that they wanted Galen Erso killed outright really surprised me. And I was surprised to see that the Rebel Alliance could do things a little less black and white than in the other films. I think I really liked Saul's character. Something I don't really understand is I, I, I want more backstory on him. What happened to his legs? Why was he always using that oxygen mask? And I know that his character originated in the Clone Wars, but I have to admit I never got that far. I got up to like halfway through season three before I kind of cut out. I like the fact that Saul Guerrero had his own guerrilla fighters, his own band of rebels that were more extreme. I thought that was definitely a very interesting aspect that not all the rebels belong to the Rebel Alliance, that there's separate factions rebelling against the Empire. And I thought that was great. I love that it was like guerrilla warfare, that they were going into the streets and bombing stuff. That the fact that they were terrorists was an interesting idea. Now, this is the thing I had a problem with. So they're intergalactic terrorists. Did they have to look like real life terrorists? Um, the, the thing that really sealed it for me was when they captured Jin, Cassian, uh, Chirut, and Baze, and they were in the holding cell, and they were like playing cards or something, and there was music playing, and the music definitely sounded Arabic to me. I, I thought that was really insulting. I guess that's all I'm going to say about that topic, because otherwise I'm going to be digging my own grave, and I'm not getting into that. So I guess that brings me to the characters of Chirut and Baze. I really like Donnie Yen's character, Chirut, and I love seeing Donnie Yen's uh, martial arts abilities displayed in Star Wars, him using that staff, and the fact that the Force was guiding him even though he was blind, kind of like a daredevil type character. I really liked that. That was something new, very interesting. He knew of the Force, 
but at the same time, he didn't know of the Force in the traditional sense that we've seen in the other films. And the fact that, I don't know how they put it, they said something, they're the followers of the wills, something along those lines. Like, uh, forgive me, I'm going to have to watch the film like a thousand more times to get all the minute details. The fact that he said, may the force of others be with you, and whatever the phrase was, they are the followers of the wills, that was lifted straight from George Lucas's original script for Star Wars, something that was kind of retconned early on before making the original trilogy. And the fact that they bought, brought that back was very interesting to me. I definitely raised an eyebrow when that came up in the movie. I was very surprised to hear that. I, I thought that was great. I really liked Donnie Yen's character, and those two as a pair, I thought worked really well. So I guess I haven't talked about Jin yet. I remember seeing her in the first trailer I ever saw for Rogue One. I got up early to watch it on Good Morning America or something, and I didn't have high hopes for her. But honestly, in the film, she came across a lot better than I thought she would. She was very human. She was damaged goods, but at the same time, she wasn't this grizzled character that could take anything. The story arc with her father was interesting. I knew g going into this that her father was going to have some hand in the Death Star. I was afraid that they were going to retcon part of the story in Attack of the Clones, where the Geonosians came up with, helped come up with the schematics for the Death Star. But it turns out he was part of a science team that were helping build the Death Star rather than being like the sole map maker, so to speak. I like the fact that there were these scientists working underneath Galen Erso, and they were probably in the same boat. And the fact that Galen Erso stood up for them in that one scene, and even though the Death Troopers just gunned them down anyway, I thought that was interesting to see like these scientists in lab coats and know that they were they were partly responsible for building the Death Star, even though they probably weren't exactly willing to do so. So I just mentioned the Death Troopers. That's something that I feel should have been explained. Everybody was speculating why there were Death Troopers. Why were there Death Troopers in Rogue One if we never saw Death Troopers in the original trilogy? And I expected some explanation of why they were there, why, where they came from. And we never got that, unless I missed it. Did I miss it? To me, it also seemed as if they weren't human. Like maybe they were mechanized or some alien race inside these, you know, armor suits. But maybe we are better off just not knowing, just seeing these cool troopers, not really knowing their backstory and just leaving it at that. Speaking of troopers, I really like the standard stormtroopers that were in the entire movie. However, one thing that kind of bothered me was the fact that their voices seemed off to me. I don't know how to explain it, but if you watch the original trilogy, the stormtroopers all have a similar voice. I can't really explain it, but that was something that kind of stood out to me. Another thing I want to talk about is all the Easter eggs, of course. Obviously, we had Tarkin, we had Leia, we had Vader, which are not so much Easter eggs as they are just this massive fan service that was thrown in our face. There were a couple things that were very minor. For instance, I mentioned the, the wills and may the force of others be with you. That was one Easter egg and uh, I can't remember their names. The two guys from the cantina in uh, A New Hope, he doesn't like you, I don't like you either. You know, they get in a scuffle, Ben Kenobi cuts his arm off. Those two, they run into those two guys in Jeddah. I thought that was interesting, but at the same time, very unnecessary. It was just like a little thing like, hey guys, check this out, remember these guys? It just seemed maybe a tiny bit forced. I thought about it later. They were seen in the, the, the capital city of Jeddah or whatever, and then it blows up. So, what's the explanation there? Another Easter egg I saw was in like the first five minutes of the film was the blue milk. I mean, it was subtle in that if you're not looking for it, you maybe won't notice it's there. And it was just one of those things that they're just like, eh, throw it in there. It's nostalgia. It's an Easter egg. Yeah, Star Wars. Another Easter egg I noticed were the two stormtroopers talking about uh, an obsolete, it was either a ship or guns or something, but they were having that same conversation in A New Hope when Ben sneaks around the Death Star to take down the tractor beam, but I knew that they forced that in as well, just a slight Easter egg. Oh, another one that was really big to me were the X-Wing pilots. I couldn't believe they even tried to replicate Gold Leader and Red Leader, forgive me, I don't know their names right offhand, from A New Hope. They had the voice down, they even had the face down to a degree, and the fact that they shoehorned those in, I was really excited about that. Something so minor that only true diehard fans of Star Wars will notice, but I thought it was incredible. With that said, however, I thought the space combat was a little lacking. I don't know how to describe it. Something about seeing the X-Wings and the TIE Fighters flying around 
just wasn't dazzling this time. I remember seeing the first trailer of the with the Star Destroyer emerging out of the shadows or whatever it was and thinking, man, that kind of looks like a model. And with the X-Wings, they didn't look like models to me. It looked like straight up computer generated space battles. So I guess I'm maybe being a little overly critical, but something about the space battles, I just seemed kind of disengaged. Whereas with the rest of it, when they were storming the grounds of Scarif and there were explosions everywhere, that obviously felt more real to me than the space battles. Something I thought was interesting, of course, was when the Rebel Corvette slams into the side of one of the Star Destroyers and then forces that Star Destroyer into another Star Destroyer, taking down the shield gate. Thought that was maybe a little far-fetched. I'm probably being overly nitpicky with that one. One more criticism that maybe you guys didn't see, but I saw. I saw the movie in Cinemark XD theaters with Real D 3D. I can't recommend the XD theaters enough. I'd say they're as good as IMAX. I thought that the 3D wasn't as jaw-dropping as it was last year when I saw The Force Awakens. There weren't as many shots that really elongated everything, that made stuff kind of come out in your face. With Rogue One A Star Wars Story, I didn't feel that the 3D was as eye-popping or as crisp as The Force Awakens was. But granted, I saw a movie in 3D, I'm happy. At this point, I'm being overly critical. It was just a minor detail that I kind of noticed. I also want to briefly point out that because I bought a 3D ticket, I got this kick-ass poster, and I got this Cinemark-only uh, Star Wars Rogue One t-shirt that I think is pretty sweet, the names of the whole crew on it, and I'm pretty sure it's a Cinemark exclusive, so I'm really glad to have picked this up for 20 bucks at the movie theater. All right, so I'm running out of steam here. I'm going to wrap this up. The thing that made the movie, that literally had me sitting there throughout half the credits with my jaw just gaping open, was the end scene. But seriously, that last scene with Darth Vader, holy shit. If anything, I would say this is the best ending to any Star Wars film to date. The rest of the film, I can't say it was 100%, but that ending, holy shit. Now I knew that there were rumors going around that Darth Vader was particularly brutal in this, but I had honestly forgotten that there were these reports of Darth Vader slaying rebels. I had completely forgotten about that. Maybe it's because there was, there's such a barrage of internet bullshit with speculations and fan theories and everything in between. But when I saw Vader ignite his lightsaber in that hallway, my God, that was incredible. I wasn't sure if I wanted to see Vader in action, but I think that was well worth it. Seeing him like cut down those rebel troopers, force throw the one to the ceiling, and the guy, the one guy was just trapped. He handed it that data card through the door that he couldn't quite open all the way. I, I, I cannot get over that. Halfway through the movie, I wasn't sure if Rogue One A Star Wars Story was really worth the price of admission. I wasn't sure if it was going to be another great addition to the Star Wars cinematic universe. However, by the end of the film, color me impressed. Like I said, the movie was not perfect by any means. There was definitely some flaws. Firstly, I thought the pacing was really odd. There were times where it was too slow and there were times where things were rapid fire and didn't explain enough to you in such a short amount of time that things were happening. But by the second half of the movie, I was impressed. I thought it was good. My overall opinion of the movie is that the ending makes it worth it. People are saying that this is the best film since Empire Strikes Back. I'm not sure about that one. It's definitely great. It's something new. It puts the war in Star Wars. It's like a espionage thriller set in the Star Wars galaxy. To me, it felt like a Star Wars comic book come to life. Now granted, these are my first impressions. I've only seen the movie once. And of course, if you know me, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm going to see it multiple times. But as of right now, I can say the movie's good. Not fantastic, but it's still good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of Rogue One A Star Wars Story. I'd love to have a conversation down in the comments below. And if you like this, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, may the force be with you.